بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم اللہ رب ذنی علماء صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم آمین الحمد للہ رب العالمین In this lecture, I will discuss the solutions of P1, variant 1-3 of November 2020. And for this, I am using the work of an outstanding and one of my best student, Ms. Khala Humayyo of class 2022, the Lyceum. Well, all these instructions are very important, especially this last one. Give non-exact numerical answers correct to three significant figures or one decimal place for angles and degrees, unless a different level of accuracy is specified in the question. You must follow these instructions. An important advice for me and for everyone, we should be soft to others. Few important tips. Avoid careless mistakes and read the questions carefully. Question number one. Express this into this form. In order to express this expression into this form, completely the square form, we use comparing the coefficient method. This is this uh, easy method. I mean, the one of the easiest method to express this into this form. So, by comparing the coefficients of like powers of x on both sides, we have 2a is 6, coefficients of x on both sides, constant terms, and b minus 4. Make sure you will substitute the values of a and b into this equation. Don't leave your answer here. Always substitute a and b into this equation. This is the final answer. The curve with the equation y is equal to x square is transformed to the curve. And we already have expressed this equation into this form. So we will use this form. y is equal to x plus 3 whole square minus 4. Because this is equal to this. So we just need to observe these two functions, these two equations. This is the object and this is the image. If you observe these two carefully, then you will see this is the translation with vector minus 3 and minus 4. Minus 3 and minus 4. You just need to write translation with vector minus 3 and minus 4. Question number 2. The function f is defined by this for this domain. We have to integrate this f for these two limits. Well, infinite means 1 upon infinite means 1 upon infinite or constant upon infinite means 0 because uh, 1 upon 0 you all know that 1 upon 0 or constant upon 0 is infinite so the reciprocal of this will be 0 so this is so simple first integrate this carefully this is the composite linear function add 1 in power and divide the function by the resultant power. So this power will become minus 1 and minus 1 in denominator which is here. Get the simplified form of the function. Now substitute the limits. When you will apply an infinite here, you will get minus 2 upon infinite plus 2. Infinite plus 2 upon is, all, is also infinite. So minus 2 upon infinite is 0 which is here. And 1 is simple. It will become 2 upon 3 because of this negative sign. So the answer is 2 upon 3. If you know these rules, then you can easily integrate this function for this limit. The equation of a curve is this. At the point, find the equation of the curve. This is simple. You just need to, uh, you just need to uh, integrate this function because dy upon dx is this. So when you will integrate this function, you will get this thing, minus 2 upon x plus 2. And by substituting this point over here, you will get the value of c. And this is the final equation. So first integrate this equation and write c here. And substitute this point into this equation to get the value of c. And then substitute c back into this equation. This is the final answer, equation of the curve. Question number 3. Solve this equation. This is so simple. You just need to uh, multiply tan square theta here. When you will multiply tan square theta with this, you will get 3 tan power 4 theta, tan square theta, and this will become minus 2 when you will bring this on left hand side. By breaking the middle terms, 
uh, we have got this. And by factorizing this, we have two values of 10 theta. So we have two values of tan theta, tan square theta. And you can also break the middle term by substitution method. If you suppose tan square theta is x, then this equation will become 3x squared plus x minus 2 and then you can break the middle term. You have option, you can directly break the middle term or you can suppose this as x. So we have two values of tan square theta. This is the negative value, you all know. Uh, no real roots when we will take a square root for this value we will get no real roots no answer so uh, when you will take a square root for this value make sure you will write plus minus this means tan is in first and second quadrant because of this domain so when tan is in first quadrant the answer is 39.2 when tan is in second quadrant the answer is 40.8 make sure you write your answer up to one decimal place Question number four, Why is the, this is the equation of the curve and this is the equation of the straight line. Find the set of values of m for which the curve and the line have two distinct points. Two distinct point means b square minus 4 is greater than zero. First equate these two y's to get the standard quadratic equation. Now substitute the values of a, b, c into this discriminant and then factorize this inequality. So you'll get these two things. You all know, uh, when we have greater sign, we shade uh, these two areas because the required region is above the origin. And make sure you will write M here. You should label M here. So uh, the uh, solution of this inequality will be either M less than minus two or M greater than 22. It's here. Always make this sketch to write the correct solution. And make sure you will label horizontal axis as by n. Question number five. In the expansion of a plus b x whole power seven, where a and b are non-zero constants, the coefficients of x, x square, and x four are the first, second, and third terms of a GP. So first we need to work for the coefficients of x, x square and x4 and for that you should expand this expansion. So coefficient of x, this is the first term of the GP, this is the second term of the GP and this is the third term of the GP. And you know this formula. When we have three consecutive terms of GP, then we can use this formula. T2 upon T1, T3 upon T2 is R. So by cross multiplication, we have T2 square is equal to T1, T3, which is here. So by substituting the values of uh, T2, T1 and T3 into this equation, we have this. By solving this equation, we have got A upon B, which is 5 upon 9. This relation is very important. Make sure you know this relation. Next question. This function is defined for this domain. Find an expression for f inverse. This is simple. Replace f of x by y, then make x the subject, and then replace x by f inverse, and all y's by x show that this can be expressed into this form this is simple just take the lcm so by taking the lcm of these two fractions we have this thing state the range of f now this function is reciprocal and the simplified form of this function is here for the range in order to write the range of this function this is the form this is the standard form. So uh, we discuss uh, these things in detail in uh, reciprocal functions lecture. 
but let me explain this to you again that this in this function if you sketch this function this one you'll get this thing for this domain because uh, f of x is parallel to 2 upon 3 in reciprocal function this is the property of reciprocal the reciprocal function is always parallel to this number this number is here and the domain is 1 upon 3 so this function is parallel to this line here so vertically it is parallel to this line and horizontally it is parallel to this line so y is increasing from 2 upon 3 see y is not touching this line this function is not touching this line it is parallel to this line that that means y is greater than 2 upon 3 so y varies from 2 upon 3 to infinite you can also write this as y is increasing from 2 upon 3 to infinite you can write any of the answers either this or this this is better f of x is greater than 2 upon 3 you can label this as f of x so f of x is greater than 2 upon 3 this is the range of this function if you want to uh, understand this concept in detail then uh, must watch my lecture on reciprocal functions i discuss these things in detail in my that lecture seven the first and second terms of an AP are, this is the first and this is the second term. <clears throat> and you know common difference is T2 minus T1. So T2 minus T1 by taking the LCM. You have two ways to solve uh, this, to prove this. Number one is this. This will become sine square theta upon cos square theta. 1 upon cos square theta is here. Tan square is sine square upon cos square. And this cos square is here. And this minus 1 upon cos square theta is here. So by taking the LCM, we can easily prove this. Because when we will take minus 1 common, we will get sine square plus cos square, which is 1. This is the first way. The second way, you can take uh, minus 1 upon cos square theta common. So you have tan square theta plus 1. Add math students know uh, this way because tan square theta plus 1 is sec square theta and sec square theta is 1 upon cos square theta. So this is the way for add math student and this is the uh, method for non add math students. You can use any of the method. Add math students can use any of these two methods and non add math students should use this method because they don't know this thing that tan square theta plus 1 is sec square theta. Let me explain this method again. Tan square theta is sin square theta upon cos square theta and this cos square theta is 1 upon cos square theta and this is here. When we multiplied these two, we get this sin square theta upon cos square power 4 theta and 1 upon cos square theta. By taking the LCM, we have this and this is the identity. Sin square plus cos square is 1. So minus 1 upon cos power 4 theta. You can use any of these methods. Find the exact value of the 13 term when theta is uh, pi by 6. So 13 term of AP A plus 12 D. The first term is 1 upon cos square theta. We have D. By substituting the value of theta into this equation, we have T 13 minus 20. Question number 8. This function is defined for this domain. Find dy upon dx and second derivative. This is so simple. First bring this in numerator and then differentiate this carefully. This will become 2x. I mean this will become 2. The differential of 2x is 2. Differential of 1 is 0. This is the composite. Make power coefficient. Subtract power by 1. 
and multiply this bracket with the differential of this thing. This is the first derivative. When you will differentiate this again, this will become 0. When you will multiply minus 2 with minus 2, it will become plus 4. 2x plus 1 is here, power minus 3, and the differential of this bracket is 2. This is the second derivative. Find the coordinates of the stationary point. For that, you need to equate this first derivative to 0. By equating the first derivative to 0, we have x uh, 0. We just need to take a plus sign here. When we take a square root, we have plus minus. Since x is uh, greater than minus half, so we have to ignore the negative value. x, we have plus minus here. So x is 0 and x is minus 1, which is not right according to this domain. So y is 2. Uh, by substituting this x into equation of curve, we have y2 into this equation. Now we need the nature of uh, the stationary point. For that, we need to put x0 into this second derivative. And we are getting positive answer. That means the point is minimum. When second derivative is positive, then the answer, the point is minimum. This is the next question. The circular measure question in the diagram arc a b this arc is part of a circle with center o this arc has center o and this arc has center a with radius 12 this is 12 so this must be 12 because this is also radius so if this is 8 this must be 4 find angle b a o B A O. For this, we need to take this triangle. Consider this triangle O M A. In this triangle, uh, O M A, this is hypotenuse and this is adjacent. So, by using cos theta into this triangle, we have theta. Area of shaded region. This is simple. It should be area of this sector minus area of this triangle. So area of this sector is half 12 square into theta and theta is here. Use this value of theta, the accurate value. Area of triangle is simple. It should be half AB sine C. A is 8, B is 12, sine this angle. It's here. Half AB sine C. Now this minus this will give you area of the shaded region. Perimeter. Perimeter is simple. For perimeter, we must have this length, this length, and this length. This is 8, this is 4. We just need to work for this length, arc length, which is r theta. So 8 plus 4 plus r theta. That's the final answer. Next question. A curve has equation where x is greater than 0 and k is a positive constant. It is given that when x is 1 upon 4, the gradient of the tangent is 3. Find k. This is so simple, we just need to differentiate this. When you will differentiate this, you will get this thing. 1 upon k is coefficient. Copy the coefficient as it is. x power half, the differential of x power half will be 1 upon 2x minus half. And the differential of this is here. And this is the constant term, so the differential of this must be 0. So by substituting x1 upon 4 into this equation and equating this equation to 3, we have k1 upon 7. Make sure you do these calculations carefully. You can write this equation in this way. 1 upon 2k under root x. This will be much easier for you. x power 3 upon 2 can be written in this way x under root x 
Now equate this to 3 and substitute uh, 1 upon 4 here and here and here. You will get k. It is given that, it is given in state that this the solution of this integral is 13 upon 12. You just need to integrate this carefully. x power half will become x power 3 upon 2. Let me zoom in this. And this will become this power 3 upon 2 when it is in denominator it will become 2 upon 3 x power 3 upon 2 over 3 upon 2 this will become 2 upon 3 x power 3 upon 2 which is here this will become 2 x power half and this will become x upon k square and these are the limits so by sub applying these two limits one by one and equating this equation to 13 upon 12 you can easily get this answer but this calculation is uh, complicated make sure you do the, these calculations carefully You can take this screenshot of this solution if you want. Next question. A circle with center C has equation. Show that the uh, point T minus 6, 6 is outside the circle. This means if this point is outside the circle, then the distance of this point from center must be greater than radius. So in fact we have to show this. Show that this point is outside the circle means the distance of this point from center must be greater than the radius and radius is 10. So we need to work for the distance of this point from center. The distance is under root 200 which is 10 root 2 which is greater than the radius. Since CT is greater than the radius, therefore this point T is outside the circle shown. Uh, two tangents from T to the circle are drawn. Let's suppose T is here. This is not the uh, sketch according to scale. T must be here because the distance is uh, very close to radius but this diagram is not drawn to scale. Let's suppose T is here so this is the tangent first tangent and second tangent. Show that the angle between one of the tangents and CT is exactly 45. We have to show this angle this one. Angle between CT and the tangent either of these two tangents. For that, uh, we should use uh, sine theta in this triangle. See, this is the radius. This distance is under root 200. It's here. We just found this. So by using sine theta in this triangle, we can easily get this angle. Theta is 45. We have shown this. Now this is very important. Since this angle is 45, and this is 90 so this must be 45 that means these two angles are same so when two angles are same then the triangle is isosceles I already have told you that this diagram is not drawn to scale this T is here I guess if we draw this if we draw this diagram according to scale then T must be here very close to circle circumference of the circle Anyway, uh, since this triangle is isosceles, so when you will drop a perpendicular from A to this uh, tangent, this line CT, then this perpendicular uh, bisect this line CT. Let me draw this here. This is A, this is T, and this is C. Since these two angles are equal and this is 90 so this triangle is isosceles so if you drop a perpendicular from a to ct 
then this is the midpoint of CT. So we have C, we have T, so we can easily get uh, the coordinates of midpoint. M is the midpoint of CT because this triangle is isosceles. Find the equation of line AB. Now we need equation of this line AB. Now this line is perpendicular with this line CT. So first get the gradient of CT. The gradient of CT is minus 1 upon 7. So the gradient of this line will be 7. And this M is the common point of CT and AB. So we can easily get M because M is the midpoint of CT. So M is 1 and 5. Now we have the coordinates of M. We have the gradient of line AB. We can easily get the equation of AB. This is the equation of line AB. You can take the screenshot of the solution if you want because this part C is very important. You can take the screenshot of the whole question if you want. The next part with this part B. Now the last part. Find the x coordinates of A and B. This is so simple. You just need to solve equation of this line AB with the equation of circle. So by solving equation of this line with equation of circle, we have the x coordinates of A and B. Well, an important advice for me and for everyone. Uh, be of benefit to others. Good luck. And I am extremely thankful to Ms. Khala Humayun who helped me to make this lecture. Indeed, she is an outstanding student. May Allah Pak bless her always. May Allah Pak give uh, the best grades to her. Ameen. Allah Hafiz.